What is up you guys? Welcome back to another one. If you're new to the channel, I am Gold Pony. I do new car truck SUV reviews on YouTube and today we are in the brand new 2024 Honda Civic sedan courtesy of Apple Honda of Hanover and Hanover PA. For more information on their inventory, please feel free to check out the link in the description box below. So we are in this one today because this is a very good looking sedan, at least in my personal opinion. It's very fuel efficient as well and it of course has a very legendary name. So ultimately in this video we will be testing testing out and going over everything about this one from acceleration to braking, steering feel, ride quality, sound system, exhaust clip, all that fun stuff. So having said all of that, what do you guys say? Let's just go ahead and jump right into it. And as always, let's start with pricing. And so as you can imagine, there are several different trim levels for the 2024 Civic. First one being the LX, which starts at $23,950, which is a modest $200 month from the 2023 model year. Sport trim level starting at $25,550, EX for $26,950, and lastly, the Touring, which is the one we are in today, starting at $30,550. But as you can imagine, with all of those trim levels, there are a couple different engine configurations available for the Civic. First one belonging to the LX and the Sport trim levels. That one is powered by a 2-liter naturally aspirated inline 4-cylinder, putting out 158 horsepower at 6,500 RPM, 138 pound-feet of torque coming in at around 3,200 RPM. Power being sent to the front wheels through a CVT with paddle shifters for the Sport trim level only. 0 to 60 time, approximately 9.2 seconds with this one. And MPG numbers coming in at 31 in the city, 40 on the highway for the LX, 30 in the city, 37 then on the highway for the Sport, taking regular unleaded fuel. But so then there is that other engine configuration and the one that we have today belonging to the EX and the Touring trim levels. That one is powered by a 1.5 liter turbocharged four cylinder, putting out 180 horsepower at 6,000 RPM, 177 pound-feet of torque coming in at 1,700 RPM. Power sent to the front wheel through a CVT 0 to 60 time for this one, approximately 7.5 seconds. So this is substantially quicker than the other engine configuration with MPG numbers coming in at 33 in the city, 42 on the highway for the EX. That's pretty impressive. 31 city, 38 then on the highway for the Touring. Once again, though, taking regular unleaded fuel. And so before we do any kind of fun acceleration or paddle shifter test here in our Civic, I did want to mention to you guys the drive mode. There's a little toggle switch located directly behind the shifter that will give you Econ, Normal, and sport, adjusting things like the shift points, the throttle response, the steering sensitivity, and the air conditioning output as well. What I mean by that, I've had a couple Civics in the past, essentially when you put it in that Econ driving mode, it's gonna tailor back the air conditioning. So if it's a super hot day, maybe you don't wanna use that, but I will say it does make a substantial difference in your MPGs. I remember driving only on the highway, but getting nearly 50 miles per gallon on the highway in my older Civic. So it definitely does work putting it in that econ driving mode but anyways i digress now having got all of that out of the way what do you guys say let's go ahead and find a straightaway let's put the paddle shifters here to the first because we do have paddle shifters on our touring trim level and keep in mind this is a cbt so technically we're not going to be shifting through any gears but i just want to see how quickly they are going to react for us here all right so i got it in the sport driving mode here and i got it in well first gear it says but and it's not shifting for me either that's pretty cool there we go and we're spinning. I love it. <laughs> it's, it's rainy out today, guys. All right, so paddle shifters are actually pretty darn quick. And again, keep in mind, not shifting through any gears, but it kind of does simulate that you are uh, pretty darn well. So I actually don't mind it for that reason. And the other thing you could do with the paddle shifters is you can use them to do a little bit of engine braking as well. So if it were to be snowing outside, let's say, and you're going down a hill, rather than actually hitting the brakes and risk sliding off the road, what you can do is simply use the paddle shifters and let the engine do a little bit of that braking for you. So you're less likely to actually slide off the road. So they're there for that reason as well. But now let's go ahead and get back full control to the Civic yet again. I'm gonna put it in normal driving mode just to get it out of that manual shift mode there and put it back in sports. And and let's go ahead and find one more straightaway and let's see how quickly the Civic here can get us up to speed. All right, you guys, I have found the perfect straightaway here. We're gonna do it from a standstill in three, two, one, go. And we're spinning a little bit. Actually, it put power to the ground pretty darn good if I'm being honest, and it is wet out. And that is pretty darn quick if I'm being honest. More quick than you would ever need in a Honda Civic. I'll just put it that way. So. That is a pretty darn impressive acceleration for what this vehicle is, with it not being a Civic SI or a Civic Type R or something like that. So I liked that. That was pretty darn good. And like I said, it kind of impressed me because maybe it's because we got brand new tires, of course, because it's a brand new car. But 
put the power to the ground pretty darn good without it being an all-wheel drive vehicle. So, a little bit of spinning, but it got the job done for sure. But anyways, to go along with that acceleration, as always, braking is equally important. So, up front you will find 11.1 inch ventilated front discs. In the back, 10.2 inch solid rear discs. As far as that six easier stopping distance goes, as we are pulling up to a stop sign right now that comes in at 122 feet. But as far as braking feel goes, it's brilliant. That's one of the things I immediately noticed on the Civic. It does definitely bring you to a very nice stop. And that 122 foot number, that is perfectly fine for the segment. Um, a lot of sedans will give you upper 120, so 122 feet, that's pretty much right on par for the course. I'll just put it that way. Then touching on suspension and handling up front, you're going to get a McPherson strut front suspension in the back, independent multi-link rear suspension, front and rear stabilizer bars. As far as ride quality goes, you do tend to feel a good bit of the road in this Civic. I will say that. So I always like to be fair and honest in my reviews and uh, you can feel a lot of the road in the Civic. I'll just say that it's to be expected in compact cars in general, but it's definitely pronounced here in the Civic. I'll say that, but steering feel it's brilliant that is one thing i absolutely love about the civic so it's definitely a weightier heavier steering feel than you're typically used to in the class i could tell you for sure it is 100 percent heavier feel than the corolla for example so it immediately points you in the direction that you want to go much more driver feedback so i am in love with the steering feel on this thing it's much more playful it's more fun to drive i guess is what i'm trying to say it's incredibly fun to drive because of the way this feels and the 10 two grips are also on the thicker side of things which i personally love because i personally think thicker grips just give the driver a little more confidence in going into turns personally like the bmw m line does for bmw as well they have the most massive grips in the world i swear but anyways as far as cabin noise goes we're going 34 miles per hour you do get a decent amount of road noise but there isn't a heck of a lot of wind noise i'll say that even with our power moonroof that we have on this particular one today so Wind noise is good, road noise is a little bit there, but it doesn't bother me personally. Then touching on visibility, I can see perfectly fine out the back, so 100% not gonna have any issues there. And to go a step further, touching on forward visibility, the rain sensing windshield wipers actually do come standard on our touring trim level only. So that is pretty darn cold because it is raining out today. So it's definitely been working perfectly fine for me. But that pretty much rounds out the performance segment of this review, you guys. Let's now go ahead and take a look at the exterior of our brand new 2024 Honda Civic sedan. All right, so here she is, you guys. The new 2024 Honda Civic sedan finished in lunar silver metallic on this beautiful rainy day that we have on the sweat here today. I hope my mic and camera don't get too wet. But anyways, let's go ahead and start with where this one is made. Taking a look at the VIN, first character is the number two, indicating that the Honda Civic sedan is built and assembled in Canada. Our friends up north. But anyways, let's go ahead and start up front on this one. LED headlights do come standard for all trim levels across the board. Gotta love that, along with the automatic feature and automatic high beams for all trim levels as well. Meaning if you have your high beams on at night and it senses the vehicle coming in the opposite direction, it's going to automatically dim them back to low beams and when that vehicle is gone it's going to automatically bounce it back up to high beams for you there so love that you guys can see below the headlights though we do have led fog lights as well and that comes standard only on the touring trim level that we have today personally i think they look absolutely amazing i'm not sure i've ever reviewed a touring trim level with them actually in place so I love the look of that, but anyways, I also love the low hood line up front as well. It gives it much more aggressive appearance. And overall, when they redesigned this generation Civic, I thought it looked absolutely amazing and it still does. So well done Honda for the exterior design on this one. But now let's go ahead and make our way to the side. All right, so I'm now climbing into the corn for you guys here. Black window surrounds do come standard. Body colored power adjustable side mirrors coming standard as well. They will be gloss black though for the sport trim level. If you wanted heated side mirrors, go with the EX or touring trims. And then the touring is also gonna give you LED integrated turd signals as well. And that of course is what you guys are looking at there. Then taking a look down at the wheel setup, 16 inch steel wheels with covers coming for the LX trim level. 18 inch gloss black alloys for the sport, 17 inch aluminum alloys for the EX. And lastly, 18 inch silver alloys for the touring. I think they look absolutely amazing. I love the design of these wheels. But anyways, that pretty much rounds out the side profile. Let's now go ahead and make our way to the back of the Civic. All right, and so but now since we are around to the back of the Civic here, all the way to the top, you will find a body colored shark fin antenna. Just below that, you can kind of see there is kind of a integrated lip spoiler, I'm gonna call it. So there's definitely a nice little accent there. I like 
like that. I think it looks pretty darn good. Of course you do have, please subscribe and like the video lettering found just above the tail light there. And yes, I've been doing this for nine years. It obviously is not what that says, but I would appreciate if you guys do like the video and subscribe to the channel if you're into new car reviews at least, cause I've been reviewing cars now consistently every single week. For nine years that's crazy i'm getting old but anyways led taillights do come standard on this one of course just below you will find dual exhaust outlets tucked away so that is pretty darn cool at least on our turbocharged engine here so but i did want to mention though you do get some chrome tips if you were to go with the sport trim level but having said that i do believe you guys know what we have to do next as always here is that exhaust clip So now since you are around to the back of the Civic, when it comes to opening that rear trunk, there are several different ways to go ahead and do that. There is a button on the key fob, there is a button on the trunk itself, and there is a button on the driver's side door then as well. But once opened up, cargo capacity comes in at 14.8 cubic feet. If that was not enough space, there is a 60-40 split, meaning the rear seats do fold down quite nicely for a lot of extra space then if you needed it. There is some cargo lining back there, and then if you were to lift up underneath of that cargo floor, you are going to find a spare tire, which is what I personally prefer as opposed to the fix a flat. But then make your way up to the rear legroom. That's going to come in at 37.4 inches. For reference, I'm an even six feet tall. This is how much space I had back there. Did want to mention the touring trim level does add quite a bit for those rear passengers, including dual rear USB charging ports. I love that. You are going to find a rear center armrest with cup holders if you go with the touring or the EX. EX is going to give you that as well. Unfortunately, though, I wish they would have put some rear ventilation for those rear passengers. None of the trim levels are going to get that, unfortunately. But then make our way up to the front seats cloth seating coming with the LX Sport and EX trim levels, leather seating for the touring trim level only, that is what you guys are looking at, manual adjustable front seats for all trim levels but the touring because the touring is going to give you an eight-way power driver seat with a four-way power adjustable passenger seat as well, heated front seats then coming with the EX and the touring as far as seat comfort goes, it's been perfectly fine for me, so definitely very comfortable seats. I've had no issues in my short little test drive here today. Then take a look at the steering wheel. It is tilt and telescoping, and again, the ten and two grips are bolstered on the thicker side of things, which I personally love, and it will be leather wrapped for the sport trim level and up, actually, so that's pretty cool. Then make our way to the startup. Let me start by showing you guys the key. You got your Honda logo on the one side. When you flip it over, lock, unlock the button to pop the rear trunk there, and the remote start is going to come on the sport trim level and up, but it is all keyless entry with a push button start. So all I'm going to do here is simply put my foot of the brake and press that engine start button located just to the left of the air vents. And so once started up, I love the digital gauge cluster that I have in this one here today. You got your tachometer on the left, speedometer is on the right, and it will adjust in color dependent upon the drive mode that you put it in. Uh, Sport is going to give you more red hues. Normal is going to give you more blue hues. And that's kind of the same for Econ actually as well. And there's a cool little graphic on the right side of the gauges there too. So overall, I like the way they displayed that. And uh, of course, you have steering wheel mounted controls. There's a bunch of different things you can cycle through up there, like uh, your radio information. There's trip A, trip B, uh, how many miles you have left until you hit empty, outside temperature, digital speedometer, the list goes on. So digital gauges pretty much allow you to display whatever the heck you want on the gauges. So I do love that. But now, let's go ahead and make our way to overall interior quality. A power moonroof is going to come on the EX and Touring trim levels, so love that we have that. Overhead sunglass holder coming on the Touring trim level only. Home light controls for the Touring trim level only as well, and that's for up to three different garage doors found just below that rear view mirror there. Automatic climate control is going to come standard on every single trim level across the board, so you just set your temperature. It's going to automatically hit it for you there. Dual zone climate control for the EX and Touring trim level, so both driver and passenger can set their own temperatures. Auto dimming rear view mirror, Touring trim level only. Sport pedals are going to come with the Sport trim level only, actually. But overall, as far as interior quality goes, I again love the honeycomb mesh design found just above the uh, climate control vents here above the passenger side glove box the Acura Integra also uses that it's so a big fan of that I love the gloss black inserts on the doors not every trim level is going to give you that the lower trim levels is going to give you a matte gray kind of look there so I do love the gloss black look there I will say that just in front of the shifter though we do have a wireless phone charger for our touring trim level you have a couple USB charging ports a 12 volt power outlet to the right of the shifter you got a couple cup holders and I like this silver texture 
miniaturized design that they put surrounding the shifter and the cup holders as well. A lot of manufacturers will actually leave that like a matte gray or a matte black. But Honda chose to one-up them and go ahead and made it in a nice silver texturized design. So I love that. And that's continued onto the doors there as well. So that's pretty cool. Just behind all those cup holders, you will have a decent amount of storage, more so than the Corolla. So I like that too. So anyways, overall interior quality is as you would expect it to be. Nothing crazy, but it'll certainly get the job done. But now let's go ahead and take a look at the infotainment screen. A seven inch color touchscreen display is going to come on the LX Sport and EX trim levels. However, for our touring that we have today, you're going to find a nine inch color touchscreen display, Bluetooth and audio streaming coming standard either way, Android Auto, Apple CarPlay, factory navigation system coming on the touring trim level. And of course, you can check out your radio information up there as well. And so when it comes to the sound systems, there are a few of them actually. LX trim level is going to give you four speakers and 160 watts. Sport and EX trim levels are going to give you eight speakers and 180 watts. And then the touring that we have today, believe it or not, it's going to give you a 12 speaker Bose sound system. I don't believe I've ever tested the Bose in a Honda Civic before. So I'm quite excited for this. Let's go ahead and turn on the radio, see what we got playing today. And let's test out our Bose sound system that we have with us here today. <laughs> That was pretty darn good. So at first, when I first turned it on, first, let me say bass is amazing. They did an incredible job on bass. The clarity was kind of iffy at first, but then I went into the sound settings. I turned up the treble a little bit and that made it sound a heck of a lot better. I don't always adjust the sound settings in these cars that I test drive. But this one, I felt like I had to because I really wanted to test out this Bose sound system. I really wanted to like it. And I did like it once I adjusted the sound settings on this thing. So turn up the treble a little bit if you find that the clarity isn't the very best that you're looking for. And that's kind of what I felt at the very beginning, but it did get better. And San Holo is absolutely amazing. My favorite EDM artist of all time. But anyways, last thing I wanted to mention to you guys on the infotainment screen is when you do put the Civic in reverse, you will find a rear view camera coming standard across the board with a few different views in the bottom left hand corner there as well. So that is always is going to lead us into safety. And so first, let me start with my favorite part. IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus, which is the very highest designation given by IIHS, so it doesn't get any better when it comes to safety. Front side side curtain airbags do come standard driver and passenger knee airbags as well. In the back, you're going to have latch, aka lower anchors of tethers for children for the rear car seats, rear child door locks, tire pressure monitoring system, but also coming standard, of course, Honda Sensing. This gives you a ton. Collision mitigation braking system, road departure mitigation system, adaptive cruise control, lane keep assist, forward collision warning, lane departure warning, traffic jam assist, traffic sign recognition, and a driver attention monitoring system then as well. And then lastly, our touring trim level is going to add to all of that front and rear parking sensors, load speed braking, and a blind spot monitoring system. So you got the little car icons in the side mirrors that let you know if somebody is in your blind spot. So overall, when it comes to my final thoughts, I still love the design. This is an extremely good looking compact car. Excellent safety as well. You cannot beat an IIHS Top Safety Pick Plus. That is the highest rating you can get. Good fuel economy as well. The EX trim level gives you 42 miles per gallon on the highway. And again, if you were to put it on Econ driving mode, like I have it right now, and then you were to do mostly highway driving, I'm telling you guys, I've gotten 50 miles per gallon in my Civics before in the past. Steering feel is absolutely incredible as well. It does make this car so much more enjoyable to drive, especially around the back roads, just simply based on the 10 and 2 grips on the steering wheel and the steering feel itself so i absolutely love that so as the refer improvement goes i got kids if they're in the back i wanted to be comfortable so rear ventilation is definitely something i would love for honda to have added to the civic maybe they will in the future i don't know but also ambient lighting i think would look absolutely amazing in the civic maybe it's because i was modifying cars back in the fast and furious one days i don't know but i think multicolor ambient lighting i'll put it that way is absolutely amazing and i think my kids would get a kick out of that as well but anyways let me know what you guys think of the civic sedan in the comments section below and that is about it for this one you guys thank you so much for watching feel free to follow me on social media at the bottom of the screen if you want to see what's coming next on the channel before it gets to youtube be sure to hit the subscribe and the bell notification button if you're in your new car reviews because that is what we do here on this channel after all do appreciate you guys watching more than you know, and I will see you guys all in the next video. Stack out.